very large bathroom. So the backstory on this, um, I don't know what the bathroom looked like prior uh, to them tearing everything out, but obviously you can see there were some walls over here and they did a lot of renovation to make this space open rather than have all these walls and closed up everything. And as you can tell, the floor was already tiled at one point. At one point, it was tiled. I'm gonna to get to that a little bit later because that's not what I'm here for. Uh, there is so much going on here. So much going on. I hope I don't take up too much time. So eventually there's going to be a vanity and a vanity, double vanity going over here. Eventually there's going to be the laundry over here, washer and dryer, washer and dryer sitting, you know, sitting over here. And then I think off to the left here, there's going to be a cabinet of some sort, linen closet or linen shelf, if you will. This is going to be the shower. And then you have the toilet closet sitting over here, uh, which I don't know. Maybe it was a toilet closet already. I don't know. I wasn't here for all of this part. Um, and then there's going to be a freestanding tub over here. It's going to be, I don't know, either a claw foot or a replica claw foot or a base type of freestanding acrylic tub, my best guess. And then there is right here a floor mounted faucet that will come up and over into the tub. Those are always kind of tricky. I've done quite a few of these and Sometimes the instructions aren't the best in the world, and I've really, really struggled with a couple of these in the past. Um, and so I don't like doing this preliminary rough-in um, on these freestanding things. So I'm glad the plumber already came in and made that happen. I don't know if it's correct, but I'm assuming it is. And here we have our transition. Uh, what do they do? An inch and a quarter? So. I guess the freestanding tub has an inch and a quarter drain because I see that boot on there, two inch and a half pipe. Um, anyway, so that's that. And they're gonna put it in a prefab niche, uh, 14 by 22. So yeah, with a little shelf on it. And then I guess they're gonna step up their drain, which I like these. Um, don't have a problem with that necessarily. That's the Home Depot thing right there. And then we get to the shower, which is why I'm here. So I get the phone call and this lady tells me that she had intended on making this. I didn't even measure it out. I should measure it out, huh? One, what's up at? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, almost eight. And I guessed about eight foot long by, I guess, three foot? One, two, three, yeah. Three by almost eight foot shower. And had it not been for this weird angle of the, had it not been for this, I probably would have taken the shower out. But then you lose the symmetry with the window and all that stuff. But it's still a good size shower. But when she sent me the pictures right off the bat, I kind of went, wow, because I already saw what the problem was. And a lot of people who do tile work already know what the problem is. So I'm gonna to get to that in a few minutes. There's so much going on here that most of my breath is gonna be wasted on all of this. Apparently, when he came in to do this curbless shower that he didn't really know how to do, um, he had also tiled, and he had tiled this floor, and he had tiled this floor, the outside floor, which is why you see all these trowel marks. Although the trowel marks um, aren't consistent. <laughs> There's a little back and forth, a little back and forth going on. Um, I like going on these jobs after they've been done to see the angst that he went through. Um, these are really cheesy Home Depot. I think they're Quip. I don't know the manufacturer, but they are really cheesy. In fact, that might be. I think that's floor and decor. That is a floor and decor. Um, leveling clip which a couple of things they're not appropriate this is not appropriate for large format tile this is a large format tile obviously you can see uh, the outline here in fact I want to say no that's 12 by 24 
I, it looks like it was larger. Anyway, this is not an appropriate clip for a large format tile, not at all. And so that's one error that he made. And then of course the other error is all the trowel marks, just every which direction you could possibly think of, um, which is kind of weird to me. Uh, then, ooh, this bothers me a lot. This is probably the third or fourth video that I've made with this stuff. Mm, let me see if I can, it's already been open. I don't know where he would have used this. Okay. This is mastic. I don't care what it says on the label. I don't care where it says you can put it. This is mastic. And this has no place in a bathroom. It has no place in a shower anyway. That's for sure. Um, it never dries. Um, I mean, it does, yeah, you know, eventually. Mm, there's nothing dry on here though. There's nothing dry on this bucket at all. But this has no place. So if you're a DIYer, if you are building your own shower, never, ever, ever get this tile adhesive. It is mastic. And even with the premixed thin set, I don't like that either. But mastic has no place in here and I don't know where I used it at because the whole bucket is gone. This is not mastic. He must have used, I can't imagine he used a whole bucket in here. I don't know. Maybe he was using it in another application in the house. Anyway, I digress. So back to the problem at hand. The backer board, besides all the trowel marks and all that stuff, you see this backer board that's on here. This is Dura Rock, or sorry. This is Hardy Backer. But a couple problems with that. She knew she was doing a curbless shower, so she wanted the outside floor waterproof, which is true. However, when he came in with his Dura Rock, <sighs> Hardy Backer, when he used the screws, right? I don't like these screws necessarily. They're difficult at best to work with, but he used his pan liner, you see, pan liner. The pan liner is throughout. That's his idea of waterproofing this entire floor. His idea of waterproofing was to use an excessive amount of pan liner that actually starts, you can see it right up under here. It just continues on. So here's his pan liner. Oh, there's a big build up here. So pan liner goes up and then you have your hardy backer and then you have a big build up of thin set over here. I don't know why that is. Anyway, pan liner that was screwed into hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of time that a pan liner was screwed into. So where is the waterproofing at exactly? I don't know. I don't know. Um, there, there's just a, there are a lot of issues with the way that he did everything in here. Um, wow. I get mesmerized, sorry. So now back to the shower. So a curbless shower needs enough height, right? There seems to be something up under here. I don't, I don't know, it's hard to figure this out exactly, but there seems to be something up under here. I think it feels like quarter inch backer board. So I don't know, like he used quarter inch backer board and then half inch backer board on top. I don't know, because I'm not seeing it over here. I just see pan liner and half inch board. Anyway, there's a slight rise. It's a little thicker over here. It's probably a good part of an inch, inch and a quarter over here. But then over here, it's barely an inch. So there's some inconsistency with this rise. The easiest way on a subfloor, this is a wood subfloor, right? You see this. Oh, here's a sneak peek. So it looks like, yeah, there's quarter inch, not backer board, but there's quarter inch plywood on top of the plywood. It looks like, it looks like, I don't know. It's really, really hard to tell what he did, but obviously more pan liner. Um, anyway, so you have this three, three quarter or five inch, five eighths subfloor. And then you have your floor joists, right? Your floor joists are running this way. So with your floor joist running this way, hopefully 
16 or 18 or 20 inches on center, you cut out that plywood. And when you cut out that plywood in these little squares, you'll probably have three or four of these squares. You keep those pieces of plywood, you scab in some two by four or, or whatever, right along the top of the floor joist here, right? And when you put those, that same width, that same width that you just measured for your sub floor, then you drop those panels in on top of those two by fours that you scabbed in. That automatically gives you five eighths to three quarter drop. Then in addition, you have half inch backer board. So that, that five eighths, let's call it three quarters. So three quarter plus half inch. Now you've got an inch and a quarter more or less rise. Yeah. Then you have your tile that's going to sit on top of here in your thin set. So that's enough rise to where now when you do your pan, now you can just slowly go to your drain with that quarter inch per foot, which is more than enough because we only have, I don't know, 18, 20 inches there. <sighs> what he did apparently, this is gonna trip you out. This is mortar. So when he set his backer board, you can see clearly over there, he didn't, he didn't drop it all the way down to the pan. But when he set his backer board, he filled in that gap, that gap that exists with mortar. And so all this mortar got pushed up inside of there. And then that became, I guess, where he started doing his slope to come down here. I don't know how he possibly got any kind of slope going this direction because there's not enough room there. But this is mortar. So apparently before I got here, um, the homeowner had him tear everything out. And I don't know what these pieces of tape are for. I have no idea. I'm glad they're not little holes that he made with tape over them. Uh, nothing surprises me anymore. So, ooh man, look at that. Oh God, look at that. What a mess. That drain looks looks higher that direction and lower over here. What a mess. Anyway, and it's cockeyed, it's not straight. Um, I don't know how he managed, I don't have my level with me, so I can't, I can't gauge this, but my best eye will tell me there's not enough pitch to go down there from whatever mortar bed he chose and then it's real loose down here too. There's a lot of ways to do a curbless shower. I just explained one of them earlier with cutting out panels and dropping them down. But there's also a, a lot of different ways for your pan liner. When I do a curbless shower, I don't use pan liner because one of the issues you get into is wrapping the pan liner up and getting that corner and then over and then how do you attach how how can you get that pan liner to stick on top of your subfloor right and then how far are you going to go out so i use curdy curdy is a much easier and much thinner membrane than this pan liner will ever be and it's just everything is a tool in my collectively all the material that i could work with is tools in my toolbox. This is pan liner is not one of the tools that I would use on this job. Every job begets whatever tools you have. And material being a tool, I would have chosen Curdy. It would have made life much easier. Much, much easier. Look at this. What is this? This guy had absolutely no business building a shower. None whatsoever. What is this? Oh, he used Pitch Perfect in here. Ah, oh, that's what this is. See, this is why I love going on these little anatomies. These little uh, forensic studies of showers that was going to fail. So there is a product, and I'm going to do a video soon, about Pitch Perfect. Pitch per Perfect are these plastic rails. And... The rail would start down here and it would be kind of thin and then it would incrementally go up and give you that quarter inch per foot drop that you need. And then you cut off the excess at the back that you don't need and then it's attached to your drain area. 
right? So he used Pitch Perfect, which is odd because it's not something I would do. It's not a tool in my toolbox to get my pitch for a curbless shower, especially for a curbless shower. Curb shower, all day long. I've never used it um, because it would take me longer to... All right, my battery died. So I'm gonna splice these two parts together. Hope I didn't miss anything. Where was I at before I so rudely interrupted myself? Oh, so the Pitch Perfect product is a tool in my toolbox that I wouldn't use for this application. It was a smart idea for him to think about that ahead of time, but again, the application was totally wrong for what he's doing in here. And also, the way this was going to be, there was going to be a panel of glass, a panel of glass connecting, a panel of glass, and then a doorway right here. So my question to the homeowner is why a curbless shower if you're going to have a door with the, the bottom door sweep right where you step down into anyway. So there's not a, sometimes when I do curbless showers, there's a practical reason, it's ADA. Somebody needs to get a wheelchair in there and roll in and roll out and all that stuff without, yeah. So it makes sense for that. But just so that you have this smooth transition of tile and then tile going in, and I don't know what this tile is, obviously 12 by 24, but the, I can see the reason because it looks nice to have that solid pane of glass sitting on top of your tile floor all the way around and you can look right in and you not have that obstruction of the curb. But at the end of the day, it doesn't serve a practical reason to do something like this in here. Another thing I noticed too, which only bothers me, apparently, that drain is not center. That would be about center. So it looks like he's, <laughs> I know it's a small potato, it's about eight, nine inches off center, and that just bothers me. Anyway, getting to center, none of this is center, and none of this he did. Apparently they have a plumber, a plumber, I can't do the quotations, yeah, a plumber that did this. However, this is the type of sweating that I do. I use more solder than I need because I've had occasion way, way, way back in the day in the early 90s where I didn't quite use enough solder because I tried to make it look pretty. And I had a little tiny leak, a little tiny pinhole leak right off one of these connections, right? And then I got to turn the water off, drain everything, you know, get in there with a brush and some flux and do it all over again. And so just by default, I use more solder than I need because I don't really care. It's going to be covered up anyway. And so this looks like I did it. A plumber does something beautiful like this. A plumber usually does something that doesn't look like I did it. Um, so that's a little bit of a problem. Also, he put a lot of heat over here to get all this going on, and I don't know why. Most of this could have been um, sweated outside and then a few connections like top here and well anyway uh, a lot a lot of heat was going on here and there's no reason for that necessarily in fact this blocking could be put in retroactively after you figure out your parameter this is a mud guard and I don't know where the screws are for the mud guard or it looks like it was perforated and broke anyway that mud guard gives you a parameter for your finished wall and I, it looks like he's probably there, and he's probably there, but we have some furring out of these one buys, two by whatever they are, looks like they were shaved. Um, so it's furring out a lot. So my only take on this is that the plumber struggled, and the plumber should have struggled in order to get this shower head there's a lot of stuff going on here. So this is your mixer. Your mixer goes up to here to your diverter. And the diverter diverts over to your body sprays. You got three of them and then up to your shower head. But it looks like it it looks like the plumber struggled here. So even though I was told that he's a certified plumber, I am not feeling that at all. That's not a plumber's work by any stretch. In fact, that's not even my work. I would have made that look a lot nicer and neater. Um, it bothers me that they bumped this out to get whatever depth they needed because look at all this depth they have in the back, right? Why did you need so much of that? I don't know. I really don't know. This is an ideal situation perhaps for pecs and I don't like pecs for a lot of different reasons I'm not going to get into, but this, was a, this would be an ideal situation for pecs. 
but now we have this bump out going on here that's not even consistent so it's much thicker up here and then it kind of thins out to almost nothing down there well it's about probably an inch but it's a good part of inch and a half two inches inch and three quarter and then look at that <laughs> i never even saw that and that's solid too that's solid so you got a good part of two inches down to one inch on the side here it's a hodgepodge of chaoticness if that's a word and when i first started the video i said i bet you know what's wrong with this picture with this picture what's wrong what's the first thing that comes out of you the backer board is hiding all the pan liner right that ain't right backer board shouldn't be hiding the pan liner unless you were going to do what he did which is envelop your whole your whole gap that you have there with mud and if you do that you've married your mud to the wall board and you'll have wicking and you'll have even hardy backer will get mold and mildew and all that stuff um he didn't get any topical membrane he didn't get any curdy he didn't get any liquid topical membrane obviously because he's using all of this pan liner so there's nothing there's no red guard there's no aqua defense hydro band eight plus nine nothing in sight and so then how would you expect look at that how would you expect anything to be waterproof here forget the floor for a minute but how would the shower be waterproof it's not it's not waterproof and so yeah a lot of problems a lot of problems I don't even know if I'm going to be doing this job, but look at that. Why is there movement? Oh my God. This drain was never anchored. That's horrible too. Yeah. That guy wasn't a plumber because she told me that the plumber did all the plumbing work. That the plumber did all the plumbing work. This guy is not a licensed plumber. I almost guarantee it. Look at that. Who sweats their drop L? Never mind. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you for whatever it's worth. She stopped the job. Uh, apparently as I said there I'm gonna try and find a picture she might send me a picture of what everything looked like when all the floor was tiled because he never got to the wall thankfully so I never finished it out but she wasted a lot of tile here and at the end of the day what do we have to do we me or somebody else is gonna have to pull up all this backer board this is this is such a mess all this backer board ha has to go excuse me it has to be thrown away. All of this has to be thrown away. That has to be cut out, which is probably why she bought the new drain. That has to be cut out. That has to be taken out. Everything has to go. It has to be started from scratch. And then I don't even know what to do about this. This is, this is, this is crazy. So that's all I have to say. Like I said, if any of this helps you on my channel specifically, I have some how-to videos, but the large percentage of my plus 460 videos going 11 years back is a heads up to people so that they know what they know before they don't know what they don't know, right? Because you don't know what you don't know until you know what you know. I know it sounds elementary, but this lady found me because she was looking for where could there be a screw up here and she found one of my videos and thankfully she found it early enough a lot of people don't so if this helps you before you get started on a project or midstream or whatever to look for any of these things that are going on none of this stuff is good hey if you enjoyed that video and you learned something consider being a patreon member five ten fifteen dollars a month would help me greatly produce more videos i make nothing from youtube at all if you're going to call me for advice, please donate $50 for 30 minutes. My link to my PayPal and my Patreon account is down below. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get immediate notifications as soon as I post a video. And thank you very much for your support.